welcome to Insight Builder channel. Solopreneur's Secret Weapon Building Your Company with Agentic ID Part 6 Continued This is the second part of the Part 6 that I am continuing. In the last video, I was discussing about the steps. I was discussing about this basic testing steps and I was talking about how to do the testing. Okay. And I was showing about to show the testing process in reality. Okay. This is the, uh, this is the uh, code base where I have all the necessary files. So you can see the app database.py, etc. And also you can see the tests folder, the same tests folder that you can see in this area, correct? In the repository, you, you see the tests folder, the same one. Now I am going to, uh, Flask is already installed. So I don't need to uh, do any installation. All I need to do is I need to say Python hyphen M unit tests discover is the command hyphen s is the flag i need to use and i need to say tests right and what it will do is it will look at the folder and it will be able to extract all the tests and it actually ran nine tests and all the tests are okay you see it did not take any number of time and you know what it had actually run all these tests that you see so if i zoom out so it ran all the tests from starting from landing page up to the logout. So it did all the testing and in each of the function, you see there is various asserting process that has happened. And also there is a various post, uh, various endpoints has been called. You can see the post endpoint here, multiple post endpoints getting called. You can see the get endpoints called here. All these things are tested one by one and ensured that the server is running appropriately. Also, if I want, I can actually create print statements like print response.data. That's how you see that this response data has been printed out. So you can see that it can actually pull out the HTML itself and it can uh, test it out. So testing is pretty uh, involved and it does a huge area by itself. I'm just giving you an introduction of what you can do. And the purpose again is to get the tests written by agentic ID and at the same time use the agentic ID to match the tests. And when the agentic ID is writing the test, you can ensure that your business requirements are met. All these things will require a bit of programming knowledge. You need to know, you need to have practiced all these things. If you have not start right now, you will be able to get it, uh, get comfortable with it at a very high speed because agentic ID is going to support you at all the corners. Right. So we saw basics of testing, how to run the testing, right? Next is understanding workflows in GitHub. Okay. In case of GitHub, what happens is there is an option called as, so I'm going to dive into the CICD pipeline right now. So if you go to any of your repository, so you will have to take this repository and you have to fork it if you want to work on this repository because this repository is belonging to my user account. You have to move this entire repository to your user account, then you need to fork it. Okay. Once you fork it, then you go into actions and in your actions, if you see, there will be no any workflows. Okay. You can actually start a workflow. Okay. In order to start a workflow, what you need to do is you have to go back. So here the workflow is going to be done using a command. So here I'm going to use a command get v1.0.5. Just a minute. 1.0.3. So this tag I need to create. First I need to create a tag. Then I need to say git push origin v1.0.3. Just a second. Once the command is executed, git push origin v1.0.3. And if you come back and do a refresh on the workflow, you'll see that the new workflow has started. And if you click on this workflow, this is where the real action is. So you see the building is happening. The entire build process, the testing process, so setting up of Python, the building up of Docker image, 
before that the tests all the tests nine tests have been run all of these things happens at a very high speed okay and then it gets pushed to the docker hub also so you can see that it will log in into docker hub then it will push to the docker hub and then it will say it is complete now it is completing the job and it is cleaning up all the processes now if you go to docker hub and if you open this you will see that i have updated got a new image okay <laughs> So here you see I have v 1.0.3 few seconds ago. So this is the power of working on GitHub workflows. Okay, and in order to make this workflow happen, so you saw something that was happening here. This entire workflow, in order to make this workflow happen, by default there is a YAML file that you need to write. So if you click on this workflow file, you can see that there is a YAML file. This YAML file is written by uh, agent ID. I did not write it. Even in fact, I was not knowing that there is a way to actually use the trigger using the tags. I learned it from agent ID. The point is, I knew that I can use the GitHub flows for creating such kind of builds because I have seen other repositories where uh, the uh, these kinds of releases of the products were done. When I looked at their uh, repositories, I went and forked their repositories, looked at their actions. I knew that we can write such kind of uh, flow YAML files. So this flow YAML file uh, starts by taking an Ubuntu latest virtual machine. It's the original machine that is running at the backend somewhere in, in GitHub uh, server. It is going to check out a branch. It's going to get the version. So this version is the v1.0.2 that we give 1.0.3 that i gave right that is a version that it is going to get using this uh, using the syntax it's going to set up python by using this command so you can see various actions here so these are the actions that is going to do the internal setting up process you don't need to do any of these things it happens automatically it installs the dependency so this dependency comes from this requirements.txt so you can see if you go back uh, I can actually, if you go to the code, you can see that. I will show it in a couple of minutes. And then here you see the command that I ran, python m unit test. So the same command, you can see that it is running here. And this is where the build happens. So if the tests fail here, then this entire build process will not work. So every step has to have the previous step work properly. Then only it will complete. The flow will complete successfully or else it will fail. I will show you a failure case in a couple of minutes. I am again regarding the docker build process docker push to the docker i have made other videos and there are lots of videos in the market also in the youtube also take a look at that here we are building the docker using the docker file and then we are using the username and password of docker hub and we are logging you see the login action we are doing that and then we are pushing it to the docker hub so all of these things happen at the very high speed and this entire YAML file was written with the help of agentic IDE. The point I wanted to make is before you uh, you are able to use this, you need to make some settings. So for that, I'll be showing you a couple of things. Even this process also will be shown to you by the agentic IDE. So you don't need to worry about that. You need to set up the secret variable in actions. So if you go into actions, you need to set up an environment. And you see here, I have set up the environment, I have set up the secrets. I will not be able to show the secrets, but these secrets will be used in the flows. And another thing that you need to do is, you need to create a PAT, that is personal access token. That will, uh, the personal access token, you can actually get it from your settings. So if you go to settings, you can actually uh, get the personal access token. So if you click on settings, if you scroll down, go to developer settings, here you need to get the personal access tokens. When you click on fine grained access tokens, I have created a solo pruner token, right? Like this, you need to create a token. So you have to create a generate new token. So it will ask for the uh, authentication process. Once you complete the authentication process, you will go through a set of steps. In that step, ensure that you give access to the contents and also you give access to the workflows 
and uh, you give access to the pull requests and commits. So these are the main uh, sub parts or subheadings that you need to give access for the workflows. Then only your workflow will work properly or else what will happen is your workflow will fail because of the personal access token doesn't have sufficient uh, what is it called uh, permission so keep these things in mind so these things anyway uh, you will face some one or the other error and then you will you will be redirected you will be shown by the agentic id how to you know resolve it but i felt that you need to know it ahead of time correct so let us go back so you see that uh, we discussed about the flows we saw about it we saw the environmental variables in the repo how to set it right now what are the git branches doing here and how uh, how it helps us okay here is one of the important point i wanted to highlight when you are going to work with uh, web servers especially and when you are going to push it to web servers like railway app or heroku they ask for proc file so you need to create a file called as proc file like this it does nothing it just has this command this is the command that deploys or runs the server so in order to get this output okay you need to have excuse me you need to have this proc file however what happens is the proc file cannot work properly if there is a docker file okay so you need to have a separate branch called in my case i have kept it as docker and in that docker branch you can have docker file okay so these two files the proc file and the docker file should not be in the same branch okay why am I telling this? Because what happens is when I am going to uh, push the uh, when I am going to push the image to the Docker Hub, I need to use Docker file. Okay, that is a separate workflow. Okay, when I am going to push it to the railway dot app, I need to use a proc file. That is again a separate workflow. These two workflows should not be confused because the, at the end when uh, when the railway dot app so this is a uh, server or this is a hosting service that actually looks at your proc file and if there is a docker file it gets confused okay and your server will not get deployed properly i learned this in a hard way and after some uh, again thinking with agent id i found this so i thought that i should share with you the reason why i am sharing this is you might actually find that it will be it is very simple to you know deploy it in railway.app yes it is easy but if you mix in docker file then it is going to be difficult okay so you need to have it in two different image two different branches so you see docker file here in docker branch let me zoom out but if you change it to main branch you will see that the docker file is not there okay so when you are going to fork if you are going to fork this uh, uh, what is it called uh, the repository you need to fork the entire uh, branches so once you click on fork it will ask you to uh, ask you whether you want all the branches then you click on all the branches that's how you will get both docker and the main branch so you saw how these things work and uh, regarding the bit branching process how the commands are there there are lots of discussions already available so i'm not going to dive into that i'm just showing you what are the steps that you need to take for getting the workflows to uh, to do their job and also to use the github actions properly to deploy both on to the railway app and also on to the docker app right and we saw how to use git tags to trigger the flows uh, we already you saw the command right i use this command git tag and uh, git push origin I'm not diving into the entire uh, basics of all these things. I'm just again showing you what is available. Okay, I want you to dive deeper, understand these concepts in your leisure time, and at the same time, you know, develop your uh, overall understanding of the uh, the ecosystem and uh, how the projects are done, how the deployment is happening, how you can use the existing um, uh, tools and the technologies. Right. So again. All the projects that have dual kind of deployments, I have already shown you right at the beginning. So let us go back. Let let's actually review it. So if you see, uh, in case of this is the flow that we took. So we wrote a test, we wrote a code, we completed the feature, we ensured that the test was working, 
then we wrote the CI CD workflow in GitHub. We triggered the workflow. One was deploying it to Docker Hub and another one was deploying to web server. So this entire thing from top to bottom, we can do it automatically using the command line shell. That is one of the main power of working in command line. I did not use any of the GUI, right? You are seeing that. Yes, I showed you a lot of GUI. Okay, I showed you actions. I showed how the files were there, how it was getting deployed, how the uh, build process was working. All these things I was showing me, showing to you in the GUI. But for actual starting of this process, I was using the command line, right? So that is the power of working with command line. And that is the power of automating also. In this video and the earlier video, we saw a lot on how you can actually leverage the TA, uh, test driven development and CI CD pipeline for doing a lot of things on your web server, on your software, and automating automating the entire process. Okay, how you can actually automate and push your server to the Docker hub automatically by using the workflows, and also how you can use branching and uh, I am not showing the automating the deployment process in railway. I have already discussed this in my earlier video. And also there are a couple of videos available in the internet. So uh, I am not diving into that. I am not touching it. So as you can see, it's not out of scope of this video. Okay, I am just trying to reduce the time involved in all these things. Right. So that uh, at the end of the day, my intention is to show what is possible with help of agent IDs. And again, I am reiterating, even though I do not show any of the uh, activities with cursor because uh, at the end of the day the yaml file the tests everything are already written by cursor ide and i've already tested it and then i'm showing it even with all that then you see the video is pretty long right hmm. so just to recap so uh, it's it's a long uh, multi-part series that uh, that it has become so you can see that we discussed why and what of tdd we then uh, decided to discuss on the why and what of CACD. We discussed what is the benefit for you if you follow this uh, CACD and uh, TDD. Then we went ahead and uh, saw the very various web applications that you can deploy using CACD. And then we went into understanding the tests that was already written and how you can do the testing using the Python unit test module. And then we saw the workflow YAML file and we saw how it can be used for uh, creating the Docker Hub, Docker image and push to Docker Hub. I believe that this video along with the earlier video was pretty helpful and it gave you a very good idea on how you can streamline your, not only your development process with Agent KD, but also your deployment as well as uh, you know, managing the uh, deployment, both of these, both of these things, you can work with Agent IDE along with other tools. You have to use um, GitHub, you have to use Railway.app. You need to understand all these things, all these tools, and how it works with your Agent IDE. With that said, I would like to leave this video with four words: Be curious, start practicing.